everyone. Welcome to Eileen Chevalier's Typewriter Alphabet Flashcards Botany Series. Today we are going to look at petals, sepals, and tepals. It's a little confusing. There's a lot to, to keep straight here, but we're going to try to sort it all out today. So petals, sepals, and tepals are the showy or protective parts of a flower. They don't create seeds themselves, but are an important part of the process. In this lesson, we'll learn the differences between petals, sepals, and tepals. So obviously you're gonna need your own journal. You're gonna to wanna to have the alphabet flashcards. And today, just so happens that in the numbers, we have five tepals, six petals, and seven sepals. So go ahead and get those guys out because it'll make it easier with the visuals in front of us to make sure that we can understand the difference. Then you'll also want to have the DK Smithsonian Flora book. They do an excellent job of showing the parts of a eudicot flower. So normally when people think of the parts of a flower, they think of the parts of a eudicot flower. However, monocots and magnolia die, um, especially the Magnolia. I'm not going to speak to every single magnolia because I'm not sure. I haven't seen them all, um, but they're a little bit different. So, the, and the way that we name them is a little different. So go ahead, and I will show you this really quickly, and then I'll let you get out your journal just so, to give you like a quick visual first. So here are the parts of the flower in the. Laura Buck. We're, we're not working with all of the male and female parts today. We're only looking at the petals, sepals and tepals, which are those like showy parts. Everyone thinks they're petals, but we're also going to look at the sepals. And then I'm going to show you the next page, which has a magnolia. And as you can see, all of these white uh, tepals are surrounding the male and female parts of that flower. So we think of them as petals. Um, technically, they're called tepals. No one's going to get mad if you use the wrong name, but it's just a little more accurate to use tepals. And I use the magnolia for the tepals. I use Christmas cactus for petals, and then the jasmine is showing you the sepals. Just so these are a little easier because they give you the colors, so you can see what parts of the flowers we're talking about. All right, now get out your journal and get ready to write a lot of definitions today. <laughs> okay, we're gonna start with a petal. Petal is the showy flower part that attracts pollinators. And under petal, the next thing to know is corolla. The corolla is all the petals of a single flower. Then underneath the petals of the flower, we're gonna look at the sepals. So a sepal is the petal-like or leaf-like part that surrounds and protects the petals as they develop. And under that, so you have one sepal, and then you have the calyx is all the sepals of a single flower. So just like the petals, one single petal, all the petals are the corolla, one single sepal, the entire, all the sepals are the calyx. Then we have tepals. They either have petals and sepals or you have tepals. So tepals are petals and sepals that look and feel alike. They just have one name for both of them. And then the last definition is perianth. All of the petals, which are the corolla, and all of the sepals, which is the calyx of a flower. And it's also all the tepals. Since they don't really divide them out. So it's just the petal, the petals and the sepals, if they're tepals, that's all the same thing. So 
all of those beautiful showy flower parts um, that are surrounding the male and female parts of the flower. Okay, guys, because there are so many definitions, we're just going to do one question today. Many orchid lovers refer to the inner tepals as petals and the outer tepals as sepals. Examine an orchid for yourself. Uh, you can watch the orchid dissection video if you don't have any orchids near you or watch other videos or look at pictures of orchids. It's good to actually touch them because part of the part of why they're indistinguishable is the feel, the thickness of those parts. So which term do you think is more accurate? Should we call them petals and sepals? Should we call them all tepals and just say inner tepals and outer tepals? And why do you think what you think? How did you come up with your conclusion? And how much does it matter? Is it okay that we use different terms? Or should we have just one system that everyone agrees on and uses? And if that were theoretically possible, is it even like, can we even have one system? Or is it inevitable that some people will look at them and see them as petals and sepals and other people will look at them and see them as tepals and they can argue till they're blue in the face, but no one's going to really agree with the other side. So is it okay that we call them different things? And what do we need if we're calling them different things? Do I just need to have an understanding of what someone else is calling those things? Um, and is that enough for us to just learn and experience these things without having necessarily the same definitions? Or do we need to have the exact same definitions and the same application of those definitions? So it's a little bit more of a philosophical question for today. Now, in your journal, go ahead and examine the petals and sepals of several eudicots. Write down your observations about their size, shape, texture, and compare those with each other. So how do the sepals compare to the petals? How similar are they? So you should draw a eudicot and label petals, corolla, sepals, calyx, and perianth. There's five things that you have to label on your Utica drawing. Then your next exercise is to examine the tepals of several monocots. Write down your observations about their size, shape, and texture, and compare the inner tepals and the outer tepals. Inner tepals would be the petals, and the outer tepals would be called the sepals. So do a drawing of those, and this time all you have to label are the tepals and the perianth. Oh. I'm going to say one thing before we go about the word perianth. So in math, you've probably learned perimeter. So it's perimeter. So measure is meter and then peri is around. So you're measuring around a shape and that's the perimeter. So peri is around. Um, and then if you think about how flowers formed. All right, so this is our Christmas cactus. And the perianth are all of these things around here. So this, you can see at the very base, we've got the calyx. And then if we open it up, I just love opening up flowers. So here is the inside. So anth is gonna be short for something. Do you see all of these white pieces, these long white pieces, and then they end with these little creamy fuzzy dots on the end. Those are the stamen. And the anther are here on the tip. And that is the really important part because that is where the pollen is. So this is the filament, this long part right here, and then these are the anthers. So the pistil of this one is in the very, very center. So all of the stamen are surrounding the pistil. So it goes pistil in the center, and then all of the stamen with their anthers are around that, and then the perianth is around that. So peri around the anthers. So all of those beautiful showy parts 
and sometimes boring sepals, calyx, calyces, are surrounding peri, the anthers, anth, peri anth. So that's an easier way to remember that. Sometimes breaking down a word helps you to remember what it is. All right, have fun with all your drawings. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on tebals, especially with the orchid, and um, whether or not you think that we should call them inner and outer tebals, or whether you think we should call them petals and sepals. All right, guys, see you next time. Bye.